Okay, hi, this is uh, Michael DeRosa with Coffeeville Community College. I'm here today and I'm going to give you an instructional video on painting with a limited palette. And so this would come out of the uh, 1600s, 1700s. Those, that's the kind of palette most artists were using. And so they had very limited resources on colors. They had to make their own colors. And so they did not have three or four blues, three or four yellows, three or four reds. Uh, they had a very limited palette. They usually had one red, one yellow, one blue. Uh, on my palette today, I have uh, red. This is a cadmium red hue, uh, cadmium deep red hue, excuse me. Hue meaning it's not a true cadmium. This is French ultramarine blue here. And then this is a cadmium yellow hue. And so hue means that it's not a true cadmium. I took, uh, then so red, blue, yellow are my three primary colors. I mix them all together to make a neutral color. And by, make, by making that neutral color, uh, I have also produced the secondary colors because if I mix red and blue together, I get a violet. If I mix blue and yellow together, I get a green. If I mix yellow and red together, I get an orange. And so by mixing all three colors together, I produce a neutral color plus I produce, I use the primary and the secondary colors. And so your primary colors, again, are red, blue, yellow. Secondary colors are violet, green, and orange. And then I have a white. And so that's how I'm going to be making the painting. Uh, this is a pre-stretched canvas that I'm using here. Uh, 18 by 24 is the dimensions of it. I'm painting from a still life over here. Here, where that can is going to be my primary focus uh, in the composition. And so... Uh, as I'm painting, I'll be talking to you and uh, telling you different formal things that I am considering. And so uh, when I paint, I'm going to be using my palette and I'm just going to be painting, mixing all colors from the neutral as I began the painting. And so we'll go ahead and start with a fairly good sized brush and the jar over here. This is just mineral spirits to thin out my paint. And so I'm to start with a little bit of neutral color, a lot of white in here. Um, I'm going to cool it down. Blue out of your three primary colors. Blue is your um, least intense. Yellow is your most intense. And red is in between. Or you can say the same thing and say I'm going to be painting warm to cool. And so here I'm mixing the neutral color. Uh, from my palette, I'm using a lot of white. Most paintings that have believable space or illusion, uh, they're going to have about 50% white in the palette. And so, again, that's the can I'm going to be painting from. And uh, I'll be working right here on the canvas. Instead of letting you see the can so much, I'm going to try and uh, alter this a little bit or, or alter what you see. Um, so that you're really seeing more of my palette and, uh, and and the canvas that I'm painting from. And so that's what you should really be interested in, is more my use of the palette than anything else. And so we'll leave this about right here. I'll back that up a little bit so now you can see the palette. Okay, so uh, you can see the palette. And you can see my canvas, and then we'll go ahead and begin the painting. I'm going to try and work fairly quickly. Uh, I'm not going to edit my video, and so we're just going to work uh, fairly quick that way. I do not have really a composition started, so I'm just going to start off with a light use of paint, mineral spirits, um, and just work out the cylinder in the can. So I'm just kind of drawing with the, the paint at this point in time, working out my proportions of the can and altering a little bit and I'll show you the can again here in just a minute and then uh, this has kind of a weird short little spout and I believe this is an old watering can and I don't know exactly what year it came from actually when I moved to Coffeeville to come and teach at Coffeeville Community College I used to spend a lot of time out in the woods walking around just checking out the scenery and uh, I happened upon this can. So it's probably an antique in and of itself. And so I'm, I'm working this part of the palette. I'll move my mineral spirits over here. And so you can just see I'm just working the color on this part of the palette. 
And so I'm fading in what's called a core shadow, which is the darkest part of the shadow, and that's kind of what I'm working on. There's another core shadow up in here, this part of the can, and so I'll just kind of quickly blast that in. And then I'll take a little bit of white to lighten, to create a lighter value of that, hit on this part of the can in here, and a little bit more white in here as well. Mineral spirits just to thin the paint out. And then more white in the same hue. As that comes into the can, it gets lighter on this side. The right side of the can is receiving some light over here. And so we're gonna lighten this up. And so notice I'm just working that neutral color. And so even though I have red, yellow, blue out on my palette, I'm not using it a whole lot. Everything's painted from the neutral color. And so I'm doing a lot, a lot of blending wet into wet on my canvas. I got a rag in this hand or a paper towel in this hand, and that's just to clean the brush. And so as the can comes around, it gets a little bit darker in value. So we'll let that darken up, get a little bit more dark, mix in the same color. So it darkens up as it comes in to my shadow. And so it's the can is round. And so the values have to show that it's round by coming into it. And so, um, some light in here. And this can is dented up a lot, so it has lots of little creases in the middle. And it makes for an interesting surface. And one thing that you're also thinking about as you make a painting is the aesthetics of the painting. Aesthetics is the underlying beauty of things. Why is some one thing beautiful and something else not? And so we're, th we're thinking about that. And if you make comparisons in reality or to real, real things around us on everyday basis, one thing that makes a high sense of aesthetics is shiny things like gold, silver, crystal, those types of things we all deem in our culture as highly aesthetical. And so the more values you have in something, usually the higher the aesthetics you're going to produce. Now I can super bright on this side and it's catching light. So I took my white plus neutral that I've been working from. I'm adding just a little bit of yellow into it to brighten that up or warm that up. And here, uh, put in this light, more white over here. It might be a little too much yellow. I'm going to try it in the painting. Always test it. Test your color. And if it's not, it looks like it's going to look pretty good so far. Clean my brush. More white into the canvas. I mean into the palette. And I'm kind of painting what a style or technique called a la prima. If you were to look up historically, uh, look up, say, an artist named Franz Hals out of the uh, Baroque era. Uh, Franz Hals painted a la prima, uh, same uh, era, a painter uh, that would paint in layers of, of space would have been like Rembrandt. Rembrandt would have layered the, the paint in glazes, or Franz Hals painted very direct. And so everything, he was working the palette the whole time and painting with the paint very opaque and so that's the style of painting that i'm working today is a la prima and then inside of here i have uh let me take a little bit of notice my neutral that i started with is pretty red red neutral so i'm taking some blue in here 
to darken that up a little bit and make an even a darker version of the blue and then so you get that contour that comes across in there and then it comes out in here pretty strong color and we're going to gray that up some or lighten that up some with some white and quickly paint this whole section in which is in a shadow this is all in shadow So once I have the shadow or have this painted in, then I can come back in and alter it on an as need basis. And so here we go. And then down inside here, this is a little bit darker in the can. And I need to recreate a darker hue. But not too cool. So I can get this dark in here. And so as you paint, you're not really painting the subject, which is in this case the can. I'm using the can to make a painting. And so I want you to think about that as you as you work on your own painting, is that I'm not really painting the can, I'm using the can to make a painting. And so 